Hello everyone, today we'll be going over the Fury of the First Order Squadron Pack. We'll start with the unboxing and review the contents, and follow that up with a review of the attack score, the health score, the movement score, and finish with the battle. So this is the Fury of the First Order Squadron Pack. This is actually a pretty big box. It's got three models in it. It's got our two bombers and our interceptor. On the side of the box, we've got some artwork showing the ships in action. And then on the back, we've got a pretty good list of some of the contents, description, pieces, quick build. So here we go. The bomber can be seen in the comic Allegiance 1 or in the cartoon Star Wars Resistance. The Whisper can be seen in The Rise of Skywalker, and it's actually featured in the trailer, with Rey jumping over it, cutting it in half. So here are the contents. we got our cards, which we'll review later on. So here we have the bases for the ships. We can see all three of the ships included are small base ships. We have here the list of contents with our components, our tokens, our upgrades, the different pilots for the different ships, and the upgrades over here. We have a description of some of the new rules, deplete token, strain token, the concussion bomb, and the electro chaff cloud that are included. We have all the cardboard, and actually there were corrections to the cardboard actually published with the recent rules update. But first, let's look at the models. So here they are. So you, here's the bomber. You actually get two of these. So this goes with the first order paint scheme of the white on black. We actually have some rectangular red engines there in the back. Pretty impressive guns out here on the winglets. And then all we got all that nice detail underneath with all the little knobs and buttons and wires. And then I actually have the original bomber here just to compare. So we've got the, the two bombers. You can see this one is all the nacelles are about the same size. With the wings spread out instead of in, it makes it feel like a much bigger ship. different paint scheme the gray and black versus the black and white we've got the pilot on the same side and then that engine in the back definitely better guns even though both are the same number of attack dice but there they definitely highlight the engines on the the new one versus the the old bomber one thing I noticed there, they've got the, the targeting computer there hanging down from the Imperial Bomber, and they don't have that in the First Order Bomber. It's just a very sleek design. And then we have... And then we have the... The interceptor here, 
these wings seem very stretched out to me, but we've got some guns on the front and guns inside. We don't seem to have a really highlighted engine there. Almost looks like a window right there. Oh, probably we do have a, a weapon hanging down here that you can see right above the peg. Once again, nice detailing here with all the little knobs and buttons and I got the, all that red, very imposing, the antenna array off to the side. Once again with that white and black color scheme. And then I do have the Imperial Interceptor here just to compare. And the first thing you notice is it's much it's a much longer ship than the old Imperial ship. Same basic cockpit. I know it's a little hard to see and with all that black there versus the gray and the black. One thing I noticed the struts between the cockpit and the wings are about the same on the Interceptor and on the Bomber, they went with a much thicker strut versus the old the Imperial Bomber. And then on the back, so I guess the two little circles next to that window Right here are, are the two engines versus on the Imperial Interceptor we've got that one big engine. Okay, so there we, we've got the models. I'll just put one of the bombers to the side. And then here's all the cardboard. So here we've got our TIE Bomber, Whisper, and Bomber dials here. here. We've got our numbers. Our appreciate, yeah, these are the deplete tokens here with the little comet. We've got our fill-ins for your, your di uh, dial holders, your cardboards. I'm still not sure exactly why they reprinted these as part of the points update, but here are the ones that come in the box, and then we've got the cardboard for the bombers. Flip it over like normal. The bases are all double-sided. And then here we've got our other piece. This is our electro chaff that are included, our concussion bombs. We've got a turret indicator, crit tokens, stress, strain, ion. So we got cloak available to us. Weapons disabled, focus, jam, shields. We've got force probably for Kylo. And then our charges. So there we go for the cardboard. So here we go with the cards in the pack. First off, we got our Whisper cards. Lowest is a two. And then we've got that Kylo Ren number five that everyone's looking for. We got our Bombers. So we got some generics down at two and three. And then we've got a breach up at five. We've got our quick build cards. 
And then our upgrades. Like always, we'll go through these. So let's start with the Whisper. So first off, we've got a Initiative 2 pilot. And this is the Red Fury Zealot. And it does have a ship ability. You can rotate your indicator only to your front or back. You must treat the forward arc requirement of your equipped missile upgrades as a turret. So we do have a three dice bullseye, a two dice turret, two evade, three hull, two shields. We've got no red actions over here, a focus into a rotate, an evade, a target lock, a barrel roll, and a rotate, or a boost into a rotate. Just seems like you can pretty much rotate whenever you want. We got Whirlwind. This is actually a limited card with that dot there. And before you engage, you must remove any number of jam tokens. Then you may gain one focus token for each enemy ship that has you in its forward arc. Here we got the 709 Legion Ace. This is generic. Initiative 4. We've got Nightfall here. After you fully execute a maneuver or perform a boost action, each ship that you moved through gains two jam tokens. So that's why we got so many jam tokens in the kit right there. Kylo Ren Limited. I know a lot of people are interested in this one. Before an enemy ship in your bullseye is dealt a face down damage card, you may spend one force. If you do that, the damage card is dealt face up instead. And this actually comes with three force that are reoccurring. And then we got Wrath. Limited. After you perform a bullseye attack, if you have one or more non-locked red or orange tokens, you may perform a bonus attack against a different target. And then here are the bomber cards. So we got Grudge, who's initiative two and limited. So the bombers have two dice attack, two dice evade, four hull, two shields. They've got a ship ability during the system phase. You may perform a boost action. And they've got focus, target lock, barrel roll into a red target lock, a red boost, a reload into a red evade. And grudge, when a friendly bomb or mine at range zero to two detonates, each time attack dice are rolled to resolve its effect, you may re-roll up to one of those dice. So with our two bombers in the pack, we get two of our generics. So this is Sinar Jameis Test Pilot. No special ability here, just initiative two. And we have a First Order Cadet. Here's Dread. Dread's limited with that little dot there. After you reload, each ship in your bullseye gains one deplete token. Scorch. While a friendly ship at 0 to 1 performs a primary attack, it may spend one hit result. If it does, after defending, the defender gains one strain token. And Breach, I-5, Limited. After you fully execute a maneuver or perform a boost action, if you moved through an enemy ship, you may acquire target lock on that ship. So there are pilots for this expansion.
We've got our quick builds. We've got Kylo with Predator, Malice, Cluster Missiles, and Enhanced Jamming Suite. We got Elusive Whirlwind with Elusive, Ion Limiter Override, Sensor Scramblers, Proton Rockets, Hull Upgrade. We've got the Red Fury Zealot with Predator Enhanced Jamming Suite. We've got Wrath with Elusive, Proton Rockets, Enhanced Jamming Suite. Nightfall with Ion Limiter Override, Sensor Scramblers. And 709th Legion Ace with Predator, Homing Missiles, and Enhanced Jamming Suite. So pretty much they think you're going to run Enhanced Jamming Suite almost all the time. Here we got, um, for the Bomber, we've got Breach with Elusive, Advanced Optics, Proton Torpedoes, Engine Upgrade, Scorch with Predator, Electro Chaff Missiles, Suppressive Gunner, and Shield Upgrade. First Order Cadet with Feedback Ping, First Order Ordnance Tech, and Concussion Bombs. We've got Grudge with Outmaneuver, Ion Torpedoes, Proton Rockets, Engine Upgrade. Dread with Feedback Ping, Prime Thrusters, DT-798, Concussion Bombs, Delayed Fuses. And Sinar Jameis Test Pilot, Cluster Missiles, and Suppressive Gunner. And here are the upgrades. So we got delayed fuses. We've seen this one before. Engine upgrade. We've seen this one before. Ion torpedoes. Cluster missiles. Homing missiles. Proton rockets. We got advanced optics that we've seen before. Primed thrusters that we've seen before. And it looks like here we go into the new ones. So we got feedback ping. After an enemy ship executes a maneuver, if it is at range 0 to 1 of your friendly device, you may acquire a lock on that ship, ignoring range restrictions. So we got two of those. That's an elite. It's a tie with a reload. Got Ion Limiter Override for a tie. After you ex fully execute a red maneuver, you may perform a barrel roll action even while stressed. If you do, roll an attack die on a hit result, gain a strain token. On a crit result, gain an ion token. So giving you an ability, then making you pay for it. We got Compassion, which is a force, light side. Before another friendly ship at range 0 to 2 would be dealt a face-up pilot or a crew damage card, you may spend one force. If you do, the damage card is discarded instead, and you are dealt one face-down damage card. Then, if you have two or more damage cards, recover two force. And you get two of those. We've got Malice, the dark side. While you perform an attack, you may spend one force to change a focus or hit result to a crit. If you do, after you perform that attack, if the defender was dealt one or more face-up, pilot, or crew damage cards, recover two force. Two of those. So here we've got Shattering Shot. While you perform an attack, if the attack is obstructed by an obstacle or the defender is at range zero of the obstacle, you may spend one force to add one focus result. And that's a force. Got two of those. We got sensor scramblers, which is a tech upgrade for the whisper or silencer. And Gain one to cloak token at the startup. While you are cloaked, the other ships cannot acquire locks on you. During the end phase, if you are cloaked and there's an enemy ship at range 0 to 3, you must decloak. If you do, the decloak fails. Lose one cloak token. So that's why we have those cloak tokens. And we got two of those. Here's our... Electro-chaff missiles, and you can only have two of them. 
And they're one charge, so you don't get to reload those. And it says right here, actually cannot be recovered. During the system phase, you may spend one charge from this card to launch one electro chaff cloud using the three bank or four straight templates and place one fuse marker on it. And this cannot be recovered. This is you need a missile and a bomb slot to equip this. Here's a gunner. This is limited DT798. At the start of the engagement phase, you may choose a friendly ship in your firing arc. If you do, the ship gains one strain token. While you perform an attack, you may reroll one die for each ship in the ar attack arc with one or more non lock red or orange tokens. First order ordnance tech. So this is first order, and it adds a reload and target lock. Suppressive Gunner. While you perform an attack, you may spend one focus result. If you do, the defender gains one deplete token unless it suffers one damage instead. Concussion Bomb. You get three charges. It's obviously a bomb. During the system phase, if any of the card's charges are inactive, you must spend one charge to drop one concussion bomb if able. Otherwise, you spend one charge to drop one concussion bomb. You may spend one charge to drop a concussion bomb. And then here's our configuration. You do need a tech slot. And so it looks like it adds a whole bunch of actions or just jam to a whole bunch of actions. I really don't see a reason why this would be a bad thing to just have jam available to you. While you jam, you can choose yourself or another friendly ship. While you defend, if the attacker has no green tokens or there is a jammed ship in the attack arc, you may roll one additional defense die. We always evaluate using the lowest possible initiative. So for the Whisper, that's the Red Fury Zealot, the I-2. And I've attached the configuration on there just to give those jam tokens. And for the Bomber, that's the Sinar Jameis Test Pilot. So the Whisper has a three dice forward attack, a two dice turret, giving an attack score of 44.6. It also has the ability to improve that by equipping missiles. The bomber has an attack score of 19.5, and that comes from its two dice forward attack. And it can also improve its attack score by equipping bombs, missiles, or torpedoes. The Red Fury Zealot has a health score of 20.3. This comes from its two evade dice, three hull, and two shields. While the Sinar Jameis test pilot has a health score of 24.2. This comes from its two evade dice, four hull, and two shields. The Red Fury Zealot has a movement score of 29 points, and that comes from its dial with its one hards that are white, all of the twos with the banks and forwards being blue. You got three sloops, three forward and bank being blue, a four straight being blue, a four K turn, a five blue straight, and a 5k turn. Now if we actually compare that to the Imperial Interceptor, we see a lot of similarities. We've got the, the blue 5 straight immediately jumps out at me as being an improvement. They've both got 4 straights. They've both got 3 sloops. 
we actually get the banks being blue in the Whisper. All of the blues on the Interceptor, all the twos are blue on the Interceptor, unlike two hard. And then they both have one hard. So we see where they got this dial from. They took away our two hard blues and gave us three bank blues and that five straight being blue. Factored into that is also the boost and barrel roll from the action bar. The Sinar Jameis test pilot has a movement score of 20.8. This comes mostly from the dial with its ones being one hard, one bank, and one forward, the one forward being blue, and the one hard being red. The twos, where we have a two straight blue, we have a three sloop and a three forward blue, and a four straight. Now we can compare this to the original Imperial Bomber. We see the Imperial Bomber did not have the one hards like the First Order Bomber does. The Imperial Bomber had two bank blues while the First Order one, we lose that. The threes are the same with the three forward being blue and we gain the sloop in the First Order Bomber. We have that four forward and the Imperial Bomber actually has the three and the five K turn. Along with that, we've got the ability to boost. We've got the ability to barrel roll. And then we actually have the ship ability of pursuit thrusters able to give us a boost action during the system phase. Okay, so let's test our point system with a battle. We'll remove the bomber for now. And just for consistency, we'll move the whisper to the right. And we'll bring in the TIE fighter to compare it to. So normally this would not be an even match at all. We would have the Whisper with its 110.4 points versus the TIE Fighter with its 60.9 for 22 versus 44. So we're going to add in a second TIE Fighter. So they're both 44 points. And now we've got 121 for 44 points versus 110.4 for 44 points. So let's see how this plays out. So I'll just readjust everything and we'll only use the forward, the turret arc on the whisper. I know it has the bullseye, but that'll just keep things easier. And here we go. So there we go, that's the result. One TIE Fighter went down, and then the second TIE Fighter was undamaged and was able to take out the Whisper. Okay, and now let's test out the Sinar Jameis test pilot. It has an initiative of 2, an attack of 19.5, a health of 24.2, a movement of 20.8, 
for a total of 76.2 for a cost of 31 points. And then we have our TIE Fighter. Initiative 1, attack of 19.5, health of 14.4, movement of 22.5 for a total of 60.9 and a cost of 22. So at this point, we would expect the bomber to once again blow out the TIE Fighter. We, they have a 9-point difference. So we're actually going to add an 8-point shield upgrade to the TIE Fighter. And that will bring them to 31 points to 33 points. And let's see how this goes. So once again, I'll just rearrange things. So there we go, the bomber actually took out the TIE Fighter. So if you like what I'm doing, please hit like below, add any comments if you want me to review a ship, and please subscribe so you get my next video. Thanks for watching.